Okay, so now here we are at Gelson's Market in lovely Del Mar, California. And it turns out that the manager's daughter, who's 12 years old, actually has type 1 diabetes herself. So they were very excited and amenable to let us come in and do this. So why are we taking you guys grocery shopping with us? Well, there's a lot to think about when you go shopping. You gotta think about carbs. You gotta think about calories. You gotta wonder, gosh, you know, should I go with the better option, the cauliflower rice, or does that even matter in the end? And then you got drinks, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and God forbid you want dessert. I mean, it can all be really overwhelming sometimes. So Steve and I are gonna take you shopping with us, um, go through some things that we often buy, which might not always be the best thing, but you know, we try to do a good job with this. And through the, the miracle of technology, we're gonna be joined by a very special guest. So Steve, do you wanna tell them about our guest? Sure. Adriana Valencia, who is a certified diabetes educator, but also a dietitian with a keen interest in diabetes. She works at the University of California, San Diego, like the both of us, and she's gonna be watching over us as we put items in our cart, and from time to time, she's gonna be weighing in. And now, even though we are both endocrinologists, we've both been living with type one for a long time, uh, and she's gonna, this is what she does every single day. Well, cool. I mean, I think it's a little unfair that she can see us, but we can't see her. But I mean, so go easy on us, Adriana, okay? Yeah, and we're gonna make choices for everybody, type one, type two, and remember, it's an individual thing. Yeah. We hope to just give you some ideas. Now, so with that, we're gonna go shopping, and after we're done picking out our items, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. So you ready, Steve? I'm ready. Okay, so okay. we our carts. Okay, so we finished our shopping adventure, which was awesome. For some reason, I have like way more stuff than you. Um, <laughs> and uh, the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go through it by meal. Kind of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and we're not gonna forget about alcohol and uh, dessert. Keeping in mind that Adriana is gonna be chiming in with how we did, good or bad. So let's start with breakfast. And I think, you know, you and I were both chatting that, you know, it's pretty often that I'll actually skip breakfast. And people will ask, is that okay? Is that good or bad? And what do you say about that? I say, listen, there's no, there's no set rules. It's up to you. And a lot of the things we pick may not be your thing. Yeah. But we're gonna try to tell you what we do that uh, we think is relatively healthy, that doesn't wreck our blood sugars or our weight. Hi everyone, I'm Adriana. Like they said, I'd be kind of floating in, giving some little tips and some information. This is a great video. I think Dr. Edelman and Dr. Pettis are bringing up a really good concern that a lot of people have. Sometimes when we go to the grocery store, whether you have type one or type two, it can feel really overwhelming to know what to select, especially if you're also concerned about a lot of other, maybe another condition that you might have with your kidneys or your heart. Now, something that Dr. Pettis just brought up was the question about eating breakfast. I get this question all the time. People ask, do I have to have breakfast? And my answer is always, no, you do not have to have breakfast. The thing is though, most of the time with people who skip breakfast, what tends to happen is later on during lunch, they, we tend to overeat at that meal, or sometimes we end up eating a really large snack. So if you're somebody who's just not used to eating breakfast, you can just have water, coffee, or tea and make it on your day and you don't feel like you eat a very large amount of carbohydrates or calories for lunchtime, that's perfectly okay and acceptable. Some patients are also following different diets like intermittent fasting, for example, where they don't eat breakfast. So that's okay to do as long as you feel that you're not overeating later on in the daytime. Right, so you can do intermittent fasting. If you don't wanna to eat till 11 noon, that's fine. So that's usually what I do. Um, but I will always have coffee. And I'm one of these people that likes to get out of the house. It's like part of my routine, you know, something to do on the way to work, another like last hurrah before I got to go to work. Um, so I like to go to, you know, Starbucks or wherever. And I typically get a cold brew, which is a, an iced coffee. And that's basically zero carbs, zero calories. I put a little bit of half and half in there. Um, but you have to be careful with coffee because you got cold brew and drip coffee and espresso on one side, very kind of diabetes friendly. 
And on the other side, you got the mocha frappa, double whip, like whatever, which can be 100 grams of, of carbs. So, you know, just saying something like coffee is a good option it is it's, it's variable. So yeah. what do you drink for coffee? You, you know what? I have one of these fancy coffee machines. I, I pour in the whole beans. Of course I'm, you do. I'm an espresso guy. <laughs> and I make like a latte with five shots and, um, and with milk. And I use 2% milk. And that really takes care of my appetite. I'm like you. On the weekdays, I get up so early, I'm not that hungry. On the weekends, I like to have a bigger breakfast. You know, I know you do. Yeah, so, all right. What Dr. Edelman and Dr. Pettis said was great about coffee. Coffee is fine to have. Um, sometimes some people are a little bit more sensitive to the caffeine, and you might notice a small blood sugar spike from that. Just depends on person to person. And if you are going to have some kind of specialty coffee, you want to make sure that you're covering that with insulin if you take insulin before meals, because like Dr. Pettis said, they can be pretty loaded with calories and carbohydrates. Now you can find the information online for the calories or carbohydrates of many of the specialty beverages. Like if you go on Starbucks or Calorie King, you can look up on their carbohydrates for a uh, caramel frappuccino grande size, and it will tell you there. So you can make sure that you cover appropriately for it. So let's talk about when I actually do have breakfast. So I, I like eggs and eggs have gotten kind of a bad rap because we think about eggs and cholesterol, whatever. But we're really learning that that's not true. And both Steve and I take medications to lower our cholesterol. So I figure, hey, I got a medication doing the work. I might as well eat the eggs that I actually yeah, like. But if you have high cholesterol, you know, that, that's not a good that's not a good explanation. Well, we'll let Adriana I'd weigh say, in on I'd that. say everything in moderation. OK, well, Adriana will be the, the final vote. <laughs> uh, so I agree, Dr. Pettis, that eggs kind of got, have gotten a bad rap because of the cholesterol content. Now, eggs are one of the most complete sources of protein, but they are full of cholesterol, the yolk portion. So if your cholesterol is already elevated, it's actually recommended to just have egg whites instead of the yolk part. Um, it's still a very good source of protein and um, it's still gonna provide you with a good breakfast idea, but really you wanna be careful of the yolks. If your cholesterol is okay, you can do a yolk a day is considered to be still heart healthy and fine. But if your cholesterol is a little high or you have a history of high cholesterol or in your family, you have issues with cholesterol, you might wanna consider sticking more to the egg whites instead of the entire um, egg, which would include the yolk. Um, so I just, if I, it's just me, I'll have probably like four eggs that I can just throw in the pan, cook up really quick, um, no carbs, throw a little sharp cheddar, sharp cheddar cheese in there, the sharper the better, I like it. Again, very low carb, kind of high protein, high fat, so it is definitely filming. You have a filling. cheese grater or you just put chunks? I just do there. little chunks. Oh gosh. Kind of like you, I, I like scramby eggs, they call them scramby. And so right before they're kind of done, you throw the cheese in there last thing so it melts <laughs> and it doesn't get the pan all sticky. And if I'm feeling super fancy, I'll throw in some sausages that I can grill on the, on the grill. I like spicy sausages. That looks good. Maybe some mushrooms. Again, all very low carb, but low filling. The key to all of it is this right here. Frank's Red Hot Sauce. I put this on everything. Literally, their slogan is, I put that shit on everything. I'm not making that up. And Eric, you might have to bleep that. But that's their slogan. <laughs> and it's so true because I put this on everything. It just is tasty. Um, very low carb. I mean, and a little dab will do you. So um, the last thing I will say about breakfast is if I do want fruit, Sometimes I'll just eat an apple. And I like eating an apple because it takes a while. You know, it can be filling. It's always better to eat the fruit than drink the juice. Yeah. Because you know, this is probably 15 grams of carbs or so. But if you drink a thing of, of apple juice, it could be 40, 50 grams of carbs easy. So this is something that, I, that I'll eat every now and then. Dr. Pettis had some really good breakfast ideas. Now I'll say what he was suggesting is is a good idea and it is low carbohydrates. If you wanted to do something low carb and a little bit also more heart healthy, like we mentioned, one thing would be to take out the yolks and just do the whites, for example. So you can try to do like an egg scramble, like he mentioned with mushrooms, egg whites. You can also do cheese. Cheese is low in carbohydrates, as he mentioned as well. It is going to be higher in cholesterol and have more fat. You could do a lower fat cheese, like a 2% version or something like a mozzarella, if you're concerned about your heart health or just keeping your calories a little bit lower overall. The other thing that he did touch on was that I get a lot of questions about juicing. It can feel like something quick and easy to do for breakfast time or any time of the day when you're not feeling like eating a meal. 
But like Dr. Pettis mentioned, when you drink something in a liquid form, it's really going to hit your blood sugars much quicker than it would if you ate it in whole form. So eating an actual apple, you're going to get fiber, you're going to get more vitamins, it's going to slow down the absorption. That's a much better choice than drinking it in a juice form. Nothing against Jamba Juice, because people love it, but that's like... It's like the, the worst, worst thing for you. It's like a zillion calories and so many carbs. Gets and people absorbed are like, quickly. You know, they come out in their yoga pants and feeling all healthy about themselves, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's not a good choice at all. So yeah. tell all me right. about where you agree, disagree. What do you do for breakfast? What's a typical Steve Edelman breakfast? Well, I'll tell you. I, when I do eat breakfast, I love eggs. And I buy egg beaters because it's super low calories and zero cholesterol. I like the egg beaters, Dr. Edelman. That's a really good choice. Because, you know, I don't know if you know this, but an egg is 70 calories. Most of those calories are in the yolk, and there's no yolk in here. Now, they put yellow dye in, which I love. <laughs> and, you know, I'm serious. And you, you could eat a ton of this, 25 calories per serving. That's so low. And, it's, you know, sometimes I eat that for dinner. I love these chicken and maple bref breakfast sausages. I thaw them out. I fry them up. And I, why do I like it? Because, you know, I mean, I'm not a, I love meat but it's lower in calories, uh -huh. a lot lower in calories. And then if I'm gonna have bacon with eggs, I take off the strips, put them on a paper towel in the microwave. I make it really crispy and it, it gets all the fat out. Yeah, I've had Steve's microwave bacon. It's actually pretty good. The yeah. kids love it too. Yeah, and then, you know what? When I go for the carbs, I like English muffins. It's 150 calories for an English muffin. A bagel is 300. So you can use this not only for your breakfast, and maybe smear a little peanut butter on there if you're going light breakfast, but it's also good to make sandwiches. Um, and you can just get away from the really carb heavy bread that yeah. you bought. You know, the other thing to talk about is, you know, why is breakfast so difficult for people with diabetes? Well, there's a lot of reasons. People are, are usually more insulin resistant in the morning, meaning that it takes more insulin to cover the same amount of carbs in the morning than it does at night. And also most breakfast foods are really high carb. You got bagels, you got donuts, you got cereal, all these kinds of things. So we're trying to come up with things that are not so high carb, but are also filling and, and, and ideally kind of calorie friendly also. Yeah. Now that was a really good point that was brought up. Um, breakfast can be hard for a lot of people. And part of the reason why it's difficult uh, as well is because a lot of us don't have time in the morning, right? We get busy, you're trying to get to work, maybe trying to get the kids ready to go. It can be a lot of things going on in the morning time. So one thing I'll recommend to patients sometimes, and something Dr. Edelman and Dr. Pettis slightly touched on too, is you can always do something like a quick breakfast meat in the morning that's frozen, like the chicken sausage or turkey sausage. Those are going to be more heart healthy than a regular bacon or regular sausage as well. Those are quick sources of protein you could put in the microwave or in the pan really quickly. You can heat up a tortilla or English muffin a slice of cheese, and that's a really quick breakfast thing you can have that would take you almost just as long as getting the cereal ready. That would be much more balanced to have than something like a cold cereal. So tell us about cereal. Yeah, okay. I grew up with tricks. I love tricks as a kid. I used to separate the colors, blindfold each other, my friends, and figure out we can if the colors tasted different. <laughs> and, no, we did. Okay. And now this is Kashi's Organic Blueberry Cluster. So that now, must be better, right, Steve? Yeah, I, I just <laughs> want to tell you quickly that that one cup of this Kashi cereal is 210 calories, 44 grams of carbs. One and a quarter cup of Trix is 33 grams of carbs, <laughs> only 160 calories. So don't be fooled by the marketing of these different cereals. Yeah. If you like tricks, for God's sake, have a bowl once in a while. Yeah, and the point is not that like tricks is a good option all the time. It's just that, like you said, you would just look at this and be like, well, gosh, this has got to be better for me, right? So I would say the takeaway point from the tricks and the Kashi comparing them is that it's just important to check the label, right? Sometimes things that are advertised as being healthier necessarily are not that healthy for you or just really carb loaded. I would not say that tricks is equally as healthy as Kashi cereal is. It's Kashi cereal is going to have more fiber. It's going to be more clean, have more vitamins. Overall cereal is not the best choice in the morning for breakfast because it's a, it's not very filling B it's usually low in protein. Um, C it's going to hit your blood sugar. Um, you're going to see that blood sugar spike much sooner than if you would have had something more balanced, like peanut butter and bread or like 
some of the egg sandwich examples that were already discussed. Not necessarily. Yeah. All right. There you go. Okay. So what do we, you got the yogurt. You want to talk you, about that? Yeah. The yogurt is, is a snack or breakfast. And I'll tell you what, you can find a cup of yogurt like this for 210 calories. You know what this is? It's called too good because two grams of sugar, but there's actually three grams of carbohydrates, 80 calories. What a great thing. Sometimes I eat two because they're filling. I like pudding. I like yogurt. But and then sometimes I might even add a little bit of my own sweetener in there, like a little bit of Splenda and some of the Mio low calorie drink uh, drops. So, well, the, it's awesome. Yogurt is a good choice to have for breakfast or snack. Usually it's recommended to do a Greek yogurt. Um, it's going to be higher in protein. Now, you do want to make sure that you check the label because the carb total carbohydrate content of yogurt varies dramatically. So make sure that you check that label. Some are nine, some go up to 25. So make sure you're reading the label to make sure that you give insulin appropriately if you're taking insulin before meals. The other thing you could do is also try cottage cheese. That's going to be high in protein, lower in carbohydrates than yogurt would be. The other thing that, you know, I drink a ton of is just milk. And I'm one of the few really? adults that I know that does that. And nobody else drinks milk in my house. So I just drink it out of the carton like a caveman. And I usually get um, this <laughs> organic stuff, not because I'm trying to be hoity-toity, but it just, the pull date tends to be much longer. Oh. Um, so it lasts longer. It totally lasts longer. Um, and I usually get the non-fat 0%. So I'm curious what Adriana says about how much of a difference that makes between this 1%, 2%. That's a really good question about the milk. Now, regular cow milk, you have, there's fat-free, low fat, 2%, and then you have your whole milk. Now, for adults, it's recommended to do more of a low fat, like a one, like a zero, like, sorry, low fat or 1% milk. That's gonna be lower in calories and more heart healthy for you. Um, the whole milk is usually safe for somebody who's trying to gain weight or more for children. Now, another, it, thing that you can consider with the milk. You can also consider doing an alternative milk that's gonna be lower in calories and lower in carbohydrates. Something like that would be an almond milk, cashew milk. There's so many different milk alternatives you can also try that are gonna be lower in calories and lower in carbohydrates for you as well. Cow milk is not bad in any way. Just make sure that you're trying to stick to the lower fat options of the cow milk. Um, but this is usually what I go, I drink this all the time. I've never um, seen you drink out of the carton. That's, yeah. Not at my house. Well, that's good. All right, so let's move on probably to kind of lunch, dinner, things you want to talk about? Yeah, you know what I mean? For me, um, lunch and dinner might even be similar. Right. Sometimes I have an omelet with my egg beaters. I love that. Um, I love eating lunch and meat. When you look at this, 50 calories per serving, and this only has three servings. So, I mean, it's super filling, suppresses your appetite, so you no just eat carbs. that just like straight out yeah. of the thing? Yeah, yes. I do too. Sometimes yeah. I might mix, jump a little, uh, put some mustard on there. Yeah. Which is a low calorie I condiment. I love that, yeah. So the thing, again, that I want Adriana weigh in is that I love sandwiches. Lunch meat can be a good quick source of protein. Now the biggest concern with lunch meat usually is the sodium content is higher. There are a lot of options when you go to the grocery store next time. You can check and a lot of the lunch meat products now have little kind of hearts from the American Heart Association now because they've reduced the sodium um, in the products or some of them will say things like no nitrates. So there's less additives in the meat as well. So kind of doing some kind of turkey lunch meat is gonna be a quick source of protein that you can do. You can also try doing something like little tuna pouches. You can purchase those with already that already have flavors in them or just playing if that's what you prefer to. That's also a good source of a quick protein that you can do that's can also be lower in sodium. If I could only eat sandwiches or any one food for the rest of my life, Me too. it would be sandwiches. I just love them. I like so, breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> I, like I you know, got a lot of different bread options because when we think diabetes, we think, oh my God, bread, it might as well be strychnine, right? Um, but so it was interesting. I came and I saw this keto culture bread and I thought, oh, that, that's interesting. Let me see what that's got. So it's um, 12 grams of carbs per slice. And then I picked up this Dave's Killer Bread, which I love. It's so good. And guess what? 14 grams per slice. It's not that much it's difference. not that much difference. So, you know, That's again, be careful. With, like when something is labeled keto or low carb, make sure you still are looking at the label. And if it's not that much different, you might as well get what you like. 
Um, and hopefully Adriana can weigh in on maybe some really good low carb or low carb -er options for making sandwiches. Sourdough is my favorite, but the, this slice per One. slice is I think uh, 20 something. That's why they only sell half a loaf at the time. 31 grams of carbs per slice of sourdough. Oh. And I love sourdough. That's my favorite thing to make sandwiches. So it's funny that Dr. Pettis and Edelman bring up the sandwiches. Sandwiches can actually be pretty complete meal in the sense that usually you have your protein, your fat, your carb, and you can add in some kind of veggies like lettuce and tomato are more are the most common. Now, I do agree with Dr. Pettis when he says that you do have to be careful with the labels, kind of like we touched on with the cereal as well. And I agree, it's 100% okay to have regular bread. If you want to have regular bread, that's fine. You don't need to purchase a keto bread. Those products sometimes can have higher fat content, uh, a lot more ingredients in them, and are also much more expensive than regular whole wheat bread can be. Now, if you're wanting to make yourself a sandwich and you're trying to keep it on the lower carb side, you can always consider doing an open face sandwich. That's a, an easy way to reduce the carbs. You can also do, sometimes they sell these sandwich thins. They're basically just skinny slices of bread. You can always do that and you can have two pieces um, of that bread. And I think it's about 22 to 24 grams of carb. There also are, when you go to the grocery store, make sure you try and select the sandwich pieces that are around 15 grams of carb versus the breads that are about 22, which are the larger ones as well. So just be conscious of that when you're checking the label. There also are some good like lower carb wrap options that you can do as well that are gonna be around 15 grams of carbs. So you can kind of mix up the sandwich like that too. Some patients like to do one piece of bread with a sandwich and then do something like a lettuce wrap with the romaine lettuce, the turkey meat, the mustard, kind of like Dr. Edelman had mentioned as well. And I would say if you wanted to do a bigger piece of bread, like the sourdough, the specialty one, since they're larger, you can use one slice and cut it in half to make yourself a smaller sandwich. And you can add a little bit more of the uh, deli turkey or chicken that you're using as well to be to stay full or add in some heart healthy avocado. So bread is something um, that can be tough. Yeah. Now, one thing I eat a lot of, and I know Jeremy does not, which is fine, is what, what why, I call- Why can't you just talk about you and not hurl insults at me? <laughs> <laughs> Edelman's big ass salad. I chop up romaine lettuce, two peppers, a English cucumber, sometimes carrots, and I put it in a big salad. Sometimes I'll definitely add black olives, which I didn't pick up today. And I will make enough for three or four salads. And then you just gotta be really careful on how much salad dressing and croutons you put on your salad. So I put it in a bowl, I mix it up so I don't have to use that much dressing. And I love salads. And I sometimes have that for dinner and lunch. I love that salad idea Dr. Edelman brought up. And one of the things that I particularly like that he said was that he makes a very large amount, so it's ready to go. Now, to kind of make eating the non-starchy vegetables easier, you can always prepare things ahead of time, like making this really large salad and, and you can put it in a Tupperware or a salad spinner ready to go. You can also even do something that's easier for you and purchase salad that's already pre-washed and ready to go as well. I know I personally, if I bought those things to make a salad, they would end up sitting in my fridge. So I usually get the tubs of the organic ready to go salad already washed and kind of just use that. So that's a great choice, of course, having a salad on the side of something, or if you wanted to make it your main meal, you can add some source of protein in there, like the tuna or the turkey, some cheese, some legumes. Um, that can also kind of make it a complete meal. So let's do some rapid fire things here. So yeah. I do the same thing, but I'm lazy. So I get the kind of like the pre-packaged salad and love to put just chicken in it, put some salad dressing on it. Um, and if I'm feeling really lazy, I'll just get the like the pre-made chicken that might be seasoned, super easy. For but dinner along those lines, if you wanna get the like the pre-packaged, if you don't wanna cut stuff up, um, I like to make a really quick stir fry with bell peppers, um, wow. onions, maybe uh, some beans if you want. You've never made me dinner. I know, you gotta come over more often. And then cauliflower rice. As much as we like give cauliflower rice a hard time, you know, this whole bag right here is about 40 calories for the whole thing. And you're not gonna eat that. And this expands, it's like this giant when you actually make it. <laughs> it just depends what kind of sauce you put in with it. That's exactly it. So you use this, some vegetables, some chicken, a little bit of soy sauce super low carb and actually really good. A lot of soy um, sauce. <laughs> I don't really care about rice. I just care that it helps deliver sauce to my well, mouth. 
That's a great quick meal idea. I tell patients all the time that you don't have to spend a lot of time in the kitchen for something that you prepare to be healthy. When you go to the grocery store, check out these kind of quick things that you can keep around your house. Like Dr. Pettis just mentioned, he does with his stir fry. You can go to the frozen section and check out frozen veggies, frozen sources of protein. They even make some pretty balanced frozen meals that are pretty complete and low in sodium now. So next time you go, keep these quick things around your home so that you can make these healthy choices. So that way you're eating at home instead of eating out, which is usually higher in calories, higher in carbohydrates as well. So while you're on cauliflower, let's talk about the cauliflower pizza. You can buy it from a lot of pizza places now. And I think you have something really good that you picked up. I picked up this loop well, flour. Yeah, no, no, no. So they didn't even call it cauliflower. No, well, so Steve was duped, and this is great because it's <laughs> cauliflower. So you look at this and you're like, cauliflower. Yeah, this is like the healthy option, right? I'm, I'm going to get this pizza, and I'm just going to like the pounds are going to melt away. The whole pizza is 810 calories and almost 90 grams of carbs for a cauliflower pizza. And then, so I saw that, and then picked up this other cauliflower pizza which is 500 calories and only 13 grams of carbs. So again, just because something says call of power or something, Steve got fooled, not me, because I did a little bit more investigation <laughs> and found this other option. Again, the labels has been brought up and that's very important when you go to the store, not just to see what's in the front of the box. Because remember, what's written on there is to kind of try to lure you in, right? There's going to be a lot of things like it says the call of power, it'll say high, it'll say five full of fiber. And you look at the back and there's like two grams of fiber. So you do want to be careful and check the label and make those good choices. Dr. Pettis is right. Some of these frozen healthy food options are actually pretty high in calories and sometimes carbohydrates as well. So just be sure that you can pair labels even when you're at the grocery store for breads, for frozen foods, it's, it's gonna be important for making a good choice. No, so again, it's a great point because honestly, that pizza that you picked up is, is almost identical to kind of just a regular pizza. How much is that one? So this one and the whole one is um, about 900 calories. That's not that much different than the cauliflower one. Cauliflower. Yeah. All right. Snacks. Um, snacks. Snacks. So real quick, you know, I love, I drink, I'm drinking diet soda all day long. I love Diet Dr. Pepper. I love diet um, cream soda, if you can oh. find it, which is oh. very difficult to find I sometimes. got the last six pack in the store. So good. If any of you don't like the taste of diet, Dr. Brown's diet cream is the best. It is really good. And I was so happy to find this. This is uh, Arizona diet green tea. I could drink this just all day long. It tastes so good and completely zero calorie, zero carbs. Um, you know, and that's important because you don't want to fill up on empty calories. Yeah. Imagine if you were just drinking a regular soda or juice or whatever, that's oh. a ton of carbs. And so find something low carb, low calorie that you like to drink. Um, and that's a really good point. When you go to the grocery store or even when you're out and you're eating something out like a specialty coffee, which we also talked about, you really want to try and save your calories more for food, right? So if you're going to get the coffee, we had talked about kind of some lower uh, calorie carb options for that. When you're at the grocery store, there are tons of low carb drinks you can do. Now, the ones that Dr. Pettis mentioned, the diet soda, the diet cream soda, those can have artificial sweetener, which are fine to consume. If you wanted to do something more natural, there's also a lot of um, sparkling drinks that you can try as well. There's so many options out there that I'm sure that you'll find something that you like um, next time you go to the store to just really try and keep your calories and carbs um, overall on the lower side. So, some snacks. Yeah. Skinny pop. You know, you, you can get the 100 calories individual packets, which I like because portion control. And that's then men's energy mix. Why did I buy this? Because I saw it on the shelf. It looked good. <laughs> and I could use energy. But um, I, I eat a lot of nuts, but I try to limit the amount. So I might do a quarter cup, eat it slow with maybe the coffee between some nuts and coffee, it's the best thing to, to qu quench my appetite. Totally. And I know you like beef jerky, so I'm surprised. I don't know if you got any. I did, But I beef did. jerky is a great thing to put in your bag, great snack to have, very low carb, again, kind of more uh, filling. There we go, cheers. It, and, and you know, it, it's interesting because between teriyaki and original, I was thinking teriyaki was a little bit sweeter. They're basically identical in terms of carbs and calories. So yeah. check and, that out. And grass fed. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I noticed that it's really fresh because it's like squishy. Okay, so I love peanut butter too. 
I see Steve's a Skippy man. I'm more of a Jif man. Are, are Creamy all the way because oh, I don't yeah. like having the nuts in there. I love putting just a little bit on celery. It's, you know, the peanut butter will, will raise your blood sugars for sure. So you don't want to overdo it. But I just, I love peanut butter. And I, I don't get the giant jumbo one because I would eat it all. Fuel the fun. You know, I go for the marketing <laughs> slogans. Those are some really good snack ideas that they uh, reviewed. Now, remember, if you're going to do the popcorn or nuts, nuts are a very good source of protein and fiber. Now, if you're going to have that, in, and like Dr. Edelman mentioned, sometimes it's easy to overeat on the nuts. You can purchase prepackaged little um, containers of nuts, or it's cheaper. You can buy a large one and put them in little baggies yourself. The popcorn is also a good lower carb snack than something like pretzels or chips would be. Usually about three cups of pop popcorn is a carb serving. So that is a good low carb snack to do as well. Um, or something you can have with like a sandwich instead of having chips. So those are good choices. The celery with peanut butter are also popular. There's also a lot of lower carb snack packs you can purchase that have things like turkey and cheese cut up. You can also make your own. Olives are another one. The jerky is a good idea. It does keep easily. You can also do uh, turkey jerky. That's going to be lower in calories and a little bit more heart healthy than the regular beef one would be. Um, you know what? It, I love dill pickles. They're basically free. Super low calories or none. And string cheese. You know, the cheese can be pretty fattening. Uh, you know, you get mozzarella cheese, which is what string cheese is. It's very low in cholesterol, low in calories, and it's and they're individually wrapped. So you can, you know, you know how you pull them off when they yeah. get room temperature, the little string. <laughs> I love doing that. So why do I have Ritz crackers here? Because I like Ritz crackers. That's super high. You know, carbs. I've just grown up on them. And the point here is sometimes you just gotta get what you like. Mm -hmm. I just take the cracker and put it right in the peanut butter like <laughs> its own little rake. But then it breaks. <laughs> Not the way I do it. I'm really good. Okay, I, can I give you, um, this is one of my last things, which is a low calorie dessert. You get Diet Jello, you can buy it already pre-made. He, he gets everything pre-made. Then you get Cool Whip. Now this is light Cool Whip. I could eat Cool Whip with a spoon as a dessert. And this is a pretty darn good dessert. And it's filling and it looks good. So yeah, I eat other stuff, you know, I might go, you know, break the rules once in a while and get a piece of chocolate cake. But I'll tell you what, this is a great thing to eat at night when you've got a sweet tooth going. It's awesome. So you know what I like? Popsicles, classic popsicles. And guess what? Each popsicle, 15 calories. I mean, how can you not beat that? Three, four grams of That's carbs per, for a popsicle. So we think of popsicles as like, oh my gosh, like you're diabetic, you can't eat that. Not bad at all. I bet your kids like that too. Yeah, but I don't tell them I get it. <laughs> and then these guys, like you oh. can find like pretty low calorie um, ice cream sandwiches, 100 calories. 18 grams of carbs, so there's there's carbs, in, but not that much in here. You know here. what, I love ice cream sandwiches. I'm gonna have one after we finish. All right, so I got I, some other things in here. Gosh, no um, wonder some, you're overweight. Look at all the stuff you oh bought. Oh my gosh, <laughs> ice cream, you got 280 calories for the whole pint, so you can find kind of lower calorie uh, ice cream, and nobody's gonna eat the whole it's pint, called, really. It's called Nix. This one's called Nix, but there's different uh, okay. versions. If you're going to do something like a dessert, like have the ice cream at home, it is a good idea to buy the ones that are already portioned, like the ice cream bars or the ice cream sandwiches or the very small pints of ice cream. That's just gonna help you with overall portion control. And it is okay to have desserts and treats once in a while. You just have to make sure that if you're taking insulin that you cover for those. You can also consider reducing the carbs or calories at the meal before, right? So if you're gonna have it after lunch or after dinner, you can kind of watch the carbs and calories with the meal ahead of time. Also, you know, going for a little walk after a heavier meal or having dessert can also help with the blood sugars too. Um, so let's talk about alcohol real quick. Okay. We did a whole talk on this that people love. A couple of things I wanted to point out that I had basically when we were at my house. I love these hard kombuchas. This is called June Shine. There's Boochgrap. There's all kinds of different versions of it. Um, they're typically very low calorie, but low carb. You will never find a nutrition label on alcohol. It's some loophole that they don't have to put it on there. So you have to Google it, uh, but this doesn't really raise my blood sugar at all. So I think this is a good option. And then I would be remiss if I didn't get some tequila, because <laughs> what's my favorite drink that I've been making these days? Spicy margarita. Some spicy margaritas. You put some, some tequila, some fresh limes, some jalapenos. Super low carb. What's that stuff around the rim? Tahine on the tajin, rim. Tajin. And then you got, you know, it's probably 100 calories. 
uh, just a few grams of carbs. So there's definitely low carb options you can do for alcohol. The thing I try to avoid that I love are those IPAs, the, the, the really tasty beers that I love, but those have like 30 grams of, of carbs. So I try to stick away from those. Now, when it comes to the al to alcohol, you some of the some alcohol does have the nutrition label listed on there. Like you'll see it on some of the seltzers that um, that have become really popular now. So some of the alcohol, you can find the carbohydrate and calorie information on the label. If you don't see it there, you can always look it up online. I think I mentioned using something like Calorie King before, um, and you can f figure out how many carbs or calories they have. But definitely you can still enjoy alcohol and not have a lot of calories or carbohydrates. If you're avoiding things that are going to be um, sweeter, like triple sack, for example, or if you're not adding juice into the into the mix as well. So it's still possible to enjoy some kind of cocktail or or some kind of um, drink that you like without overdoing it on the calories or carbohydrates. Well, let me just say the reason I didn't choose any alcohol, because Jeremy always has so much around him. I just used I just ask him to share. Thanks. All right. Well, with that, I think uh, we should probably wrap up. Yeah. See if Adriana has any other things to say. And uh, it's fun. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. I think that you both did a really good job. I'm really impressed with some of the food options that you guys had chosen. You both did a great job. And I love that you threw in a lot of comments about keeping it simple, right? You don't have to get too fancy when you're trying to keep it healthy. One thing I'll add in is that if you go to the grocery store, it is a good idea ahead of time to make a list to kind of help keep you on track, keep you from forgetting things that you need to cook some meals at home. Um, that's always a good way to kind of help keep you with your meal planning goals there. But you both did a really good job. And I totally agree that to save time, it's okay to purchase things that are pre-washed or pre-cut or frozen. Make sure you check those labels, right? We said that multiple times during the presentation with things like bread and ice cream to help you kind of make a good choice um, as well. So next time you go to the grocery store, you have some really good ideas from Dr. Edelman and Dr. Pettis regarding some, some yummy food options that you can try.